Hey everyone, it's Miranda Patron here. Welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I have this lovely art stone here today that I created using the Happy Dotting Company's largest mold and also switched to Quickcrete to test that out because it's very inexpensive. I'm pretty happy with the results. So I'm going here to my Pinterest and I have a whole section on color palettes, which sometimes if I'm stuck, I just come out here and take a peek and decide on some colors that I want to use. So I find that very helpful and it's out here for you all too. This was the last stone I did, those reds and different colors here for the Christmas stone. But here I've started to select some wintry ones that I thought would be good for my stone today. And I really like this one, but... I might even go super minimalist and just use only a couple colors, so we'll see how this goes. So I went with the Pewter Extreme Sheen for the background of this lovely little guy. And you can see the center here. The lovely Happy Dotting Company mold gives us a center point to start off from, so that helps create your symmetry for your mandala. So I'm using the 3 quarter inch acrylic rod to just place some titanium white in the center here to start off this mandala stone. And I said I was going to go minimalist, so I think I am just going to go all white with this design and we'll see how it looks when we're done. So two colors only for this stone, the pewter background and then the white. So I'm just using the angle spot detailer here to do a ring of dots around our center. So this would be about the smallest size of your dotting tools when you have the five set, the set of five styluses. So that's where we're going to start out here with our first ring. And again, this is just the titanium white. I'm just stealing it from the center here. So next, I'm just gonna grab the etcher tool that I have, and I'm gonna actually use the metal end, which is super tiny, and we're gonna put some white dots in between the ones we just put down, really tiny. And the other ring is wet, so I'm just stealing from those dots just a tiny bit of paint to put in between here. So you can see how that changes the design a little bit. It's actually really nice. So I hope you're all doing well. I see a lot of people getting tools and doing some art therapy here so we could all use a little bit these days especially around the holidays so i hope you're enjoying this design and taking some time for yourself just hang out and paint a little bit i'm going to switch back to my angle spot detailer paintbrush here and over the first round i'm just going to go a little bit larger with my dots this is a little close together, so I'm going to space them out here and just do every other one at first. And then after I get done with these, I'll go back and I'll tuck dots in between the ones that we just put down. I'm pushing down just a little bit harder so the dot is getting a little bit bigger, but that's the beauty of the brushes, as you can just go by pressure to make the sizes of your dot different, add a little more paint, and see the amount of my dots here, I can't go in between and have it work out evenly, so I'm, I had already planned on filling in for another ring, but had I just wanted to leave that second ring with every other missing it would not have been even amounts but if you do your plus sign at the beginning that will work out evenly for you so that you don't have to worry about counting your dots to make sure that they fit and I kind of do my designs pretty organically anyway I don't 
use a lot of stencils and I don't do a lot of guidelines. So starting from the center and then just moving out, you just kind of place things down and see what fits in each section. <laughs> All right, so this is back to the etcher tool. I'm going about an inch away and I'm just going to do a swipe here down. We're going to do our plus sign with these so that I can get them evenly spaced. And you can see I did about a two and a half inch diameter circle for a guideline out here just so I can kind of make sure that my swipes are about the same length each time because you're starting out farther as opposed to using your center for a guide to move in. So again with the plus sign and then I'm just kind of eyeballing I didn't measure out the sections in between, but you could measure if you wanted it exact. And this is the etcher tool, the gold end. I'm just dipping, starting out at the edge here, and then pulling it towards the center, and the paint, as it runs off the tool, will make that skinny tail. So this I found a lot of people are having an easier time with these for the swipes. You know, the brushes are hard because it's a pressure thing. And this, you just literally drag it until the paint comes off. So you can practice on paper to see the lengths of how much paint and how much, um, how far you can drag it on each item. So it'll give you kind of a gauge on what tool you can use. Your dotting tools will do these too. Just so you know, the styluses, this works to do the swipes. It makes it a lot easier. So don't be disheartened. Practice your swipes with other tools. I promise they, these things work really well. See? So we did our plus sign and then the 45 degree angles in and I think I'm just going to start at the top here using the etcher tool and work my way down to the base of the swipe next to it. So I'm going to get a kind of an arc going and then this first line of dots will help as a guideline for other items that we're going to paint onto this little stone design. So you can see I'm just starting at the top and then I'm kind of gauging how big the dots are by re-dipping it and then when I get to about the fourth or fifth dot I'm just letting the paint run off the tool without reapplying more paint. See I need a little more on this one. But so they're a little larger at the beginning and then they get smaller towards the end because I'm just letting the paint run out as I dot down the tool, I mean down the stone. So you can see the fun design that this is already creating, which I didn't know it was going to do. But I mean, I like some movement and I like asymmetry in a lot of my designs, you'll see. But you know, that each time you try something different, you create something new. So it's kind of a fun little adventure each time to see, you know, if I do this, if I do it this way and then change direction, or I add a bigger dot throughout here, it's going to change your mandala every time. So. I kind of likened it, and this is going to give away my age, but they used to have choose your own adventure books when I was younger, and you would just pick a different page to have a different ending to read throughout the book. So I thought those were pretty fun as well. So this is like your painting, choose your own adventure. So this is kind of looking like a saw. You know, but it's similar to the pinwheels and the fireworks that I've done in the past. So it's kind of the same idea. But giving yourself a little bit of a guide using your own painting, then you don't have to draw guidelines. And you can see I'm still stealing from the center, so that center dot is still wet. So I'm just kind of moving along here. I wasn't waiting for rounds to dry, and that's kind of helpful as you move farther out on the stone. Um, 
because that way you're not crunching them all in and waiting for rounds of dots to dot dry. You can work your way around the stone at different sections. I think we're going to do some little tiny teardrop type swipes up here. So I'm going to dot it, but I'm going to switch it to the metal end just so I can kind of divert the paint in the direction I want it to go here and make sort of that teardrop shape. And I think we'll do three at the end of each of these longer swipes. I'm going to wait for that one to dry a little bit and come back over here. I'm going to work around and do one at a time here, I think, first, so they don't bleed into one another. And this one had a lovely little piece of fur in it, so I'm just going to use my silicone tool here to wipe it off and then wipe my tool off on something else. and then just a little water because this extreme sheen is kind of shiny and it allows for me to clean it off a little easier especially if you catch it quick then you just kind of rub it off and then it doesn't ruin it and you also didn't have to paint over the background I mean you could if you had waited for it to dry all you would have to do is paint a little more of the pewter over it and then you're good to go once it dries to, um, to fix that part of your design so no harm Stay relaxed. This is for calming, calming painting sessions. We all need a little break these days, so don't get upset with yourself. Don't feel stressed about painting these. Just take your time. You can correct mistakes. And then also, like I said earlier, this was done with Quickcrete, and I think I paid like $265 for a 10 pound bag. So to make the stone, it was not that expensive. I mean, time, a little time put into it, a little effort, but you know, you can always paint over it or you can always just make another one to go upon and switch your design up. So don't feel stressed about this. Just take your time and calmly hang out, paint a design, have a nice, nice gift to give someone or a nice little piece of art to put up around your home. I know a lot of people are saying they're piling them up these days because there weren't any art um, art shows or a lot of craft shows this year. So I know a lot of people are keeping their inventory at home, which I kind of like. I like having it around. And it's kind of everyone's at home creating, so we're in a kind of a DIY, do-it-yourself phase which I think is, is awesome. I'm so excited about how many people are painting mandalas these days and doing the dot art. It's great. And I'm excited to have you all here. So please say hi in the comments. If you can't think of anything else to say, just help me out a little, throw a comment in there where you're from, from where you're watching from. There's people all over the world that this kind of art brings us all together. It's so awesome. I love it. Plus it helps me out with the algorithms because then it'll keep showing the videos. So if you don't feel like there's anything you can do to help artists, just sharing their posts or commenting on their posts helps out with Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of those. It just helps out with the algorithms. So that's just something little, but I appreciate you all so much. And I love creating. Anytime I have some time, I, I want to put these out there for you because I think we all need some mo calm moments in our lives. So you can see as I go, I'm not putting a ton of paint down. It's just a, a one millimeter dot probably your smallest dotting tool size, but I'm just using one end of the etcher, put my little dot of paint down, and then I'm using the metal end of the etcher to just drag it down to the center of the top of our larger swipe here.
Okay, so I'm going to start using musical interludes so you guys don't have to listen to me talk the whole time. You can just relax and paint when we get to these sections that are a little bit larger. It takes a little more time and concentration. So I'm just dotting down the side of our first row here, using that as a guideline. Finishing up this last one here with our second row. And I think as I look at this, I really I don't want to leave this as negative space in here. So let's do I think somebody called these little mukas when they were talking about Zen Tangle. So we're gonna take our etcher tool, and we all know how to draw a number two, I'm pretty sure. But it's just a top of a number two, as if you were going to draw the number two. So up and around and down. But you're kind of not making too much space, so the top still looks like a, a dot. It's still connected, but then you just have this cute little tail. I think I called them polywogs in one of my videos, or something like that. I can't even remember, but... You can call them whatever you want. It's just a fun little design that will just tuck in this negative space. I just feel like it fits pretty well. You have to forgive me, my son is jumping on the trampoline, so it's shaking my camera. <laughs> but you get the idea here so, here. so each space will get one of these little designs. And it's very easy with the etcher to do. Just the number two, top of a number two. <clears throat> so I think too we'll do a third row up here go around just almost at the base of that little triplet element with the little tiny teardrop swipes and then we'll do one more row on each of these
Okay, so grabbing my etcher again, going to the gold side, I think we're gonna do some more of these little mukas. <laughs> I'm just gonna call them that from now on, because it's funny, it's cute, and it's easier for me to remember. So we're gonna take it, and we're gonna do it the opposite way a little bit up here from how we did the bottom. So you sort of have a yin-yang type situation for the mukas in each section. But it's still, you can see I'm still doing like the number two, and then I'm just pulling the tail down along the arc that we've created with our three rows of dots on the arc here. And these ones are a little bit larger, so I have a little bit more paint on it. And it's very slow. Just take your time. And then go around. Drop a little paint down, go around like the number two, and then down. But just with the tools, if you want a little bit larger of an element, you're just adding, loading, they call it, more paint onto your tool. And if I needed to, I could always re-dip this and add a little more to the dot before we pulled it around. And that way you could actually pull the tail out longer. So if you wanted to do a much, much longer tail, depending on your design, just add more paint to the beginning. And then you can actually go back and grab from the end of your tail and pull it out more as well. And so this one I can't really tuck down in with the large end of the tool, I'm just going to grab the metal end, and that's it. I make my tail a little bit longer. And so just playing around with these things is really, really helpful, and it kind of helps you to see what you can do with each of the tools. So this one's an acrylic rod, and it's about a half an inch in diameter. And at the top of our little triple teardrop elements here, I'm just going to kind of tuck one of these larger dots. So the thing I will say is your paint consistency is important when you get to the edges here. I'm kind of lifting the tool up and forward, I guess, towards the center of the stone. And that way it gives the paint a minute to settle heading towards the center before because, you know, these stones are on an angle and you don't want it to just dribble off your stone off the edge. So if you kind of lift your tool up and towards the center, not too much because you don't want to ruin your dot as a circle, but with the paint, it kind of gives it that push towards the center as opposed to it dribbling down the side. <laughs> So there have been times, too, when I'll pause the video and I can just blow on the edges or put a fan on it for a little bit. Um, once it gets that edge dry, it'll help kind of contain the circle of your paint if your paint is too thin. But there are also plenty of mediums out there. Gel mediums are really common these days for thickening your paint. Just a tad. Just so that it's a little thicker and it'll stay in place a little more. I've also been asked by a few of you recently um, how to make the points, <laughs> the peaks in the middle. So that would be thickening your paint as well. If you want thicker peaks in the middle of your dots, you can thicken the paint. And these tools, when you pull up the, that acrylic rod, it's going to pull the paint with it and make a point. Or you could also top dot. So after this is all dry, you come back and do more dots over the top. And that will bulk up your, up your dots as well. So I'm just going around here again with my paintbrush, the angle spot detailer. So it would just be a small dotting tool size wise. And we're going to do, I think probably ultimately I'll do two rings around each of these dots. And I like to steal from the dots while they're wet as opposed to going back to the palette. So just take paint from the wet dot in the middle here and um, just work my way around. And for the smaller dots, it's usually about the correct amount. The 
these hardwood floors in our living room for my temporary studio. I really appreciate you guys bearing with me through all this. So the trampoline that my son loves to play on while I'm painting <laughs> shakes the camera. So I apologize. Thank you so much for bearing with me, you guys. It's going to be probably till next summer at this point for the actual studio to be up and going. I have to re-cement the floor and redo the ceiling, put a little bit of a new roof on so we have a leak. So it's going to be a little bit, but that's okay. Projects, right? So with the brush, I'm just using pressure to do the size. And the paint is running off the brush as well, obviously, but I mostly just use pressure for the size. So starting off with the larger dots at the top, working my way around, I just lessen the pressure as you work your way to the bottom and you'll get smaller dots. And that should work with any of the liner brushes, the smaller liner brushes. I just like the angled one because I can see what I'm doing. And that way I can place the dots where I need to. <laughs> I usually try to keep my turntable turned towards me because working in front of me seems a lot easier for me to keep the symmetry. But you'll find a way that works best for you. The more you do this, it becomes like a muscle memory type thing. This is really just the take your time type of thing and relax and enjoy the painting. All right, so in looking at this, I think I will do another ring around each of these after that we finish this first round. Okay, how are we all doing finishing up this last round on our big dots? I'm going to switch it on over now to the metal end of the etcher tool and just kind of steal some of the paint here and do some little dots around our second ring that we had done. So it's just small dots in between each of those here. So 
Switching up the view a little bit here, I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to do some larger dots at the top of each of our elements here. And I'm just pressing down harder and pushing it around into a circle for a larger dot. So you can see the movement of the brush. You're just pushing down and around and you're painting it into a circle. So there's no trick. It's still the same size 10 angle spot detailer liner brush, but I'm just painting circles with it. No magic, just practice. <laughs> so now I'm just kind of debating what else I want to add to this. So I think I'm going to try using the metal end of the etcher tool here. I have to get a little more paint on it so it can wick to the stone. But we're going to do some little mukas. And we're just going to, remember it's the number two, so I'm just dip a lot of paint on it because it's a smaller end so it can catch on to the stone. Do my number two and then I'm pulling it just up to the top of the dots that we just put down almost like you're drawing half a heart. So we're just gonna pull it to the point of the heart would be here at the base of the large dot. So up and around and then pull it into almost a heart on the side of a heart, there we go. And we'll do them on the other side too. So this will be kind of, kind of like a separated little heart. I am getting a lot on. See how it's about ready to drip off the tool? So I just have to make sure I, it, I tap it a second so that it drips onto the stone and then it will wick off of that. So just kind of pull off because it's connected to the stone. It'll just pull the paint off your tool just enough so that you can do this. But you can also do this with the brushes. It's just a little more practice. You just start at the top and pull it around and lessen your pressure as you come down for your tail. So I'm debating putting an arc here. Maybe I'll do it from the bottom. No, because I want to do the mukas on the other side, I think. So this is kind of how you go through it organically. You know, do I see if I can do space here on each one? But I think I am going to do the muka on the other side and then we'll do the arc down to our little triple teardrop element there at each one. So this is the opposite direction now. So not the number two. You're actually going to go backwards. So think the, uh, the left hand side of a heart but you're just gonna pull it up and around so that it creates this little shape here. I didn't get quite enough paint on my tool for that one, but. <clears throat> so you can see it's attached to the stone, down and around, just almost touching the point uh, where our other one ends, so. Shake the paint down to the edge here, sometimes tap it on the stone. Nope, I'm gonna have to redip this one. So this is a little finicky because it's the metal end, but I want them to be smaller, so I'm going to use the smaller end. But you can pull it out here, just grab it from the dot again. But don't lose hope, don't lose heart. Sometimes things just take a couple of extra steps. But again, like I said, you can do them with the brushes and just kind of practice out how large you want the little design to be. But this way too, you can see I'm actually touching the stone because that has to let the paint catch on. Same thing I do with the dotting tools. If I'm using the dotting styluses, I'm actually touching the stone, especially with the swipes. I rest it right on there because otherwise your hands could be shaky. It's easier to control if you're resting it on the stone. And if your paint's fluid enough, it will just pull right out into a nice tail for you. So I'm actually touching the stone. And this quick crete, you can see got a little rougher on the edges. I could have just sanded that down initially or gone over the stone with some um, sealer first 
and that would have made it smoother. So now I'm going to just kind of, in my mind, <laughs> I'm making a plan. So I'm going to go on the angle here using my paintbrush, but I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to go large, larger dots here, and then work my way out to the mucha pair that we just created by just kind of dotting up here and see I'm just lessening my pressure each time and you can do this it's the same size brush same amount of paint on it and just working my way and you can see from this angle I press harder at the beginning with more paint push harder shake it around a little bit make sure you lift your tool all the way back up push down a little harder and then I'm just as I go I'm lessening the pressure for each dot so it's smaller, smaller, till you get to the almost end where you're just barely using the point. So it just takes a little bit of practice. I promise you guys can get this if you want to try the brushes. There's a couple people out there teaching with brushes now too, I see, doing classes so for dotting. So you could check them out as well. But it is literally just a pressure. Guide your hand along heavier for the bigger and I'm just shaking it around a little bit because these dots aren't that large but you can actually just paint a circle like we did on the edge just practice I promise not magic but you can see just the tip of your brush is touching it lets the paint off and there you go and if you didn't feel confident about getting the arc right you could always just kind of etch on actually I take that back you can't etch on the extreme sheens that well so like the first circle I drew on here was with pencil. So you can do that. There's chalk pencils as well. But you can see the, the cute little design this arc is starting to make here for us. And so this is just a different angle, but it's the same, same arc up to our little design. And you're just taking your time. Doesn't have to be rushed. Here's the last arc here. Kind of looks like waves. But that might be an idea for another stone. Making waves. That happens a lot too. As I'm creating, I'll see other designs and think, oh, I could do that for an ocean stone. All right, so we're going to do another round here of dots to follow that arc. Alright, so just gonna finish up our last row here, following that arc.
And then we're going to move to the inside of that arc and do a row on the inside just to kind of fill in the space. But we're going to start at the top here and then just work our way down to the same base along the same arc, just the larger dots at the top as opposed to the bottom. So we'll let it get smaller as we go down towards the bottom. So we're going to grab our etcher tool again, and I'm just going to go out to the top here and do a straight swipe just along our arc here, but it's pretty much straight at this point because we're out far enough. So I'm just going to pull it just almost to the top, not quite, just do a smaller one. And we're going to do that at each spot above our three rows with the gold end. Of the edger tool so I'm just kind of making the dot here and then pull it along slowly until you get your tail And I know I say this in almost every single one that I do these swipes, but really, really, it's just take your time, guide it where you want it to go, no matter what tool you're using. Just because the words that everyone we use for these, you know, the dot drag, the swipe, the swoosh, everything makes it sound quick. And then when you see them just painted on a stone, they look like they were done quick. So just take your time, guide it where you want it to go, shape it the way you want, and then pull it out and just angle it just at the top with the tail. But really, it's just slow, taking your time, controlled. A lot of people are using the wrist rests now. It's like a bridge that you can just rest your wrist on too. So it kind of gives you a little extra stability with resting your wrist up a little higher, but also if you're working on sections of a larger piece, that way you're not putting your hand in wet paint. <laughs> So I think there's a lot of people have those on Etsy. I'll have to look to see if I can find y'all a link for one and put all the links in the description. So like the turntable, the paints, my tools, I put everything in the description so that you can go and check the items out for yourself. Let's see how that's coming along here. And I also like to look at it on the screen myself because when you're up close with it, you don't really, you see all the little things you made a mistake possibly on. And sometimes I just need to walk away or look at it on a different device to just kind of gauge, you know, do I need something more? Do I want to add something? So I think 
I don't know why I just want to put a dot <laughs> in the inter in the inner part here just in that little space of the corner at the top of the mucha close to the center I'm just gonna take my brush here and probably tuck a dot in each one of these so I just want to check and make sure that I have a good amount of space on each one of these because you know my spacing's not 100% perfect either we're not perfect just make sure it's gonna fit where you want it to go and so I'm gonna push down a little bit harder so it's bigger than the dots that we have here already and just to kind of fill that negative space up a little bit here but yeah that's looking at the screen that's already looking better how I wanted it <laughs> Sometimes you just get a feel of what you want for your design too. So as you go, stop, take a look at it, walk away for a little bit, come back to it. it makes a huge difference. And don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Some things that I've just, I had an ornament, I think it looked like clusters of seeds. I didn't like it. I threw it out and a lot of people were saying they really liked it. It looked modern, but I just, ugh, I don't know. I shouldn't have thrown it out, but that was a couple years ago. <laughs> We all have different ideas of what we find aesthetically pleasing. So, so I've decided to do some little mukas in here. And I have the metallic end, so the pointy end of the etcher. I'm just dipping. And this is our number two, so it's not the backwards one. And I'm following along the first larger ones that we put. Just a little bit on an angle and tucking the tail in next to it. Right along the larger one. So in my mind it started out that I was going to do some sort of snowflake type wintry design and these are winter colors it's fun with these two just two colors and a couple of tools but you can see how it develops and changes as you go and even with the stencils you have a lot of freedom I mean you have guidelines but you have a lot of freedom to change up things I saw at some point somebody was doing square dots I have the oval dots. We do a lot of different shapes for the mandalas now. It's There's a lot of room for creativity. Oh yeah, that worked out well. I'm excited about that. Cute. And I can't remember who it was that told me it was mukas, but thank you. It's a cute word. It's fun. They use it for the zen tangles and I think I'm going to be stuck using it now. <laughs> All right, let's grab our etcher one more time here and do a small, so I'm not loading the tool with very much, so it's gonna be a small swipe just alongside the larger one, just to kind of fill out the space towards the edge of the stone here and just round out the design a little bit, just cause looking at it on my screen, I can see that big blank spot and it's bothering me, I don't know why, but in my head, I feel like I should put something here. So we're gonna put something here for this design. And I'm not loading it too much, so it's mostly just on the tip, even though it looks like there's more on my tool. It's just mostly on the tip so that it makes a smaller design. We'll do it around each one here. All right, so I'm just looking it over a little bit more here. And I think, I think I'm gonna be done with this design. So you can see, I haven't even varnished this yet, but that extreme sheen really, my lamp is reflecting off of it. So all I used was the pewter and the titanium white for this design. And it's, it's simplistic. I really only used a few tools and then the acrylic rods. It really was not too much. And we did it in just under an hour. And this was a large stone too. It really accepted this design well. So I'm super excited about this one. And we'll go on to varnish it in the next little segment if you wanna see what it looks like. The difference between a clear coat and the not clear coat, just having the option out there. I'm going to use the high gloss, high gloss Duraclear 
But like I said, you can see this extreme sheen is still so shiny that my lights are reflecting off of it. And I just used a sponge brush to apply that as the base. So I hope you guys had fun doing this. I'm looking forward to doing more. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about it in the comments. Okay, so this is the Dirt Clear. It's budget friendly. It's indoor outdoor. It's pretty easy to clean, just some soap and water um, for your brushes. And it's non-yellowing also, so I just put it on with a sponge brush here. And I try not to work it too much because then you'll get the brush line, so I literally just pour it on my piece. Whether it's a canvas, wood, the stone, whichever I'm doing, I really I pour it on there first and I try not to work it too much with the brushes because It'll start to get tacky if you do it too long, and then it'll get cloudy, and you just want to brush it on as quick as you can. And make sure you're covering your whole stone. And then make sure there's not too many thick places where it's going to drip, so I just kind of do a swipe around the edges here just so it's not dripping. And I only do the top first to let it dry, and then I'll flip it to do the back after I sign it. But it's just quick as, you know, we're doing 30 seconds here of just barely brushing it to just kind of smooth it out over all the parts that you've painted and then give it a chance to dry. So shiny. See the difference? It's amazing. So I'll put a link for this in the comments too so you guys can check it out. Decor is pretty budget friendly and they're, they have good quality products so I would highly recommend them. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you guys can find me on Instagram and Facebook too, Miranda Patron Art, but I have my website where you can get links to everything. So my shop, the palettes, um, the tutorials, YouTube, everything, all from my website, which is MirandaPatronArt.com. All right, you guys, take care. I'll see you all again soon. And if not before the holidays, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season.